Have you heard about the Draco Project? It's a revolutionary development by NASA and DARPA, focusing on nuclear thermal propulsion. A demonstrator is being designed to be tested in orbit within the next two or three years. NASA was already working on thermonuclear propulsion in the 1960s, but back then, despite the promises, it didn't work out very well. And you might be wondering, what has changed since then? Well, science never stops. In the past two decades, incredible advancements in material engineering and manufacturing methods have brought this idea back to the table, now with more safety. The Falcon 9, for instance, has become one of the most reliable launch vehicles in history. Can you believe we are on the verge of exploring nuclear propulsion in space without major risks during launch? And that's not all. Nuclear energy can also be used to generate electricity in satellites, probes, and even inhabited bases on other worlds. Imagine having a base on the moon powered by small nuclear reactors. But how will all this work? Let's find out. Using a nuclear reactor in space isn't exactly a new idea. During the Cold War, Soviet spy satellites used nuclear energy. And guess what? One of those satellites, Cosmos 954, re-entered the atmosphere above Canada in 1978, spreading radioactive materials over more than 100,000 miles. Scary, right? But don't worry. With today's advancements, the story is different. On the moon, for example, solar energy isn't as viable. The lunar day-night cycle lasts 14 days each, leaving the lunar surface in complete darkness for two weeks. Bringing tons of batteries to compensate for this period would be financially unfeasible. So, how are we going to keep a lunar base running during these long nights? That's where nuclear energy comes in as an obvious solution. Nuclear reactors on the moon have no chance of re-entering Earth's atmosphere, making them a safe and efficient option. Additionally, these reactors are small and robust. One example is Krusty, a prototype reactor that weighs only 295 pounds and is less than six feet tall. It can operate for 10 years without maintenance, producing enough energy to keep many equipment running. Incredible, isn't it? NASA is already working on a program called KiloPower, which started in 2015. Three years later, Krusty was tested and proved promising. It uses uranium-235 and has an extremely simple structure, making it reliable and easy to operate. Its design includes heat exchangers, an electrical conversion system, and radiators that dissipate residual heat. All this makes Krusty an efficient solution for generating electricity in space. And how does the conversion of heat into electricity work? Krusty uses Stirling engines, which are powered by the heat from the reactor's core. These engines are connected to heat pipes that transport the heat to the engines, where it is converted into electricity. The redundancy in the system ensures that, even if some pipes fail, the reactor can still operate efficiently. During tests, Krusty managed to produce one kilodollars of electrical power, enough for various operations in space. But NASA doesn't want to stop there. The next step is to develop more powerful reactors, capable of generating 40 kilodollars or more, enough to power lunar or even Martian bases. Imagine having a base on Mars with enough energy to support human life for long periods. And the most interesting part is that these reactors will be compact and portable, allowing their installation in different locations on the lunar surface. Nuclear energy can also revolutionize spacecraft propulsion, significantly reducing travel time between Earth, the Moon, and Mars. This would not only speed up missions, but also reduce astronauts' exposure to radiation in space. Exploring the solar system would become more accessible and safer. So, what's next? NASA has already contracted private companies to develop these more powerful reactors. The first prototypes should be ready for testing within the next decade. And we are not alone in this space race. China and Russia are also working on their own nuclear reactors for lunar exploration, with plans for deployment between 2033 and 2035. But don't think that nuclear energy in space is only about reactors on the moon. It has the potential to drive space exploration 
in ways we can't even fully imagine yet. The possibility of faster and safer interplanetary travel opens up a whole new range of opportunities for humanity. Let's explore a bit more about how these advancements are possible. The materials and technology used to build these reactors are highly advanced. Metal alloys and ceramic coatings, for example, are designed to withstand extreme temperatures and hostile environments, such as deep space. Additionally, manufacturing methods like 3D printing allow the creation of components with unprecedented precision and efficiency. And why is nuclear energy so important for space exploration? Simple. Nuclear energy offers a dense and reliable power source. Unlike solar energy, which depends on the availability of light, nuclear energy can provide constant and long-lasting power, essential for long-term missions and environments where sunlight is scarce. Think about the rovers exploring Mars. Rovers are robotic vehicles designed to explore the surfaces of planets and moons. They are equipped with a variety of scientific instruments to conduct geological, atmospheric, and other important research. Specifically on Mars, rovers like NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance have been crucial for our understanding of the Red Planet. They collect soil and rock samples, take high-resolution photos, analyze the chemical composition of the terrain, and search for signs of past life. These rovers are essential for exploration missions because they can operate in hostile environments and send valuable data back to Earth. They need a stable power source to run all their systems, from scientific instruments to communication systems. A nuclear reactor can provide this energy continuously, allowing missions to last longer and explore further. Moreover, nuclear energy can be used for propulsion, significantly reducing travel time between Earth and Mars. Nuclear thermal propulsion engines, like those being developed in the Draco project, use the heat generated by nuclear reactions to heat the propellant. Heating the propellant means using the heat from nuclear reactions to raise the temperature of a substance, usually a gas or liquid, which is then expelled at high speed to generate thrust. When the propellant is heated, it expands rapidly and is expelled through a nozzle, creating thrust that propels the rocket forward. This method is more efficient than traditional chemical propulsion because nuclear heat can heat the propellant to much higher temperatures, resulting in stronger thrust. This offers much greater efficiency compared to traditional chemical propulsion systems. Let's imagine a manned mission to Mars. Currently, with chemical propulsion technology, this journey can take six to nine months. With nuclear thermal propulsion, this time could be cut in half or even more. This not only makes missions faster, but also reduces the time astronauts spend exposed to space radiation. Now, let's talk a bit about safety. Safety is a primary concern when it comes to nuclear energy, especially in space. The reactors developed by NASA and its partners are designed with multiple layers of safety. They are made to be incredibly robust and capable of operating in extreme environments without failure. Moreover, the control systems are highly automated, reducing the need for human intervention. In case of emergency, the reactors are designed to shut down automatically, preventing any type of accident. And as mentioned before, once a reactor is on the surface of the Moon or Mars, there is no risk of re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, eliminating a major concern. And what about the environmental impact? In space, the environmental impact of a nuclear reactor is practically nil. There are no ecosystems to be affected, and radiation is contained and managed safely. Furthermore, the use of nuclear reactors can reduce the reliance on large quantities of batteries or solar panels, which have their own environmental footprints. What does the next decade hold for nuclear energy in space? With growing competition between nations and private companies, we are on the brink of a new era of space exploration. Advances in nuclear technology will not only make missions safer and more efficient, but also open up new possibilities for the colonization of other worlds. Think about the possibilities. Self-sufficient lunar bases, manned missions to Mars and beyond, 
and even the exploration of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons. Nuclear energy could be the key to unlocking all of this. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any news about space and technology. There is a lot of exciting stuff coming, and I want to share it all with you. Oh, and leave a comment with what you found most interesting, or if you have any questions. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.